you have to look at uh, manual nerve passing the foramen ovale and it is not alone then who is there male structure bd charasia bd charasia will tell male structure pass for an oval m for mandibular nerve if you say m is for mandibular nerve then what is the a for l for e for let's discuss but male structure pass for an oval there's a question asking male structure pass for an oval who is not passing and you tell i know you know yes what is m for m for the mandibular nerve not given so so that is the answer why where is the middle mandibular artery passing it is passing for a men spinosum it is passing for a men spinosum then what is a for a is accessory mandibular artery l for l is lesser petrosal nerve e for e the mystery vein and what is m for m for mandibular nerve already know so male structure pass from an oval yes m for mandibular nerve not the middle mandibular artery no not the middle mandibular artery it is passing in the from an spinosum let us see some diagram for the same purpose then and and keep your answer as choice number b and see the diagram when you see the diagram this is the bone again we see yes actually this is a butterfly shaped bone who is this butterfly shaped bone it is the sphenoid bone it is having a lesser wing which is anterior and it is having a greater wing which is in the middle cranial fossa okay what do you want to see what i want to see is opening in the greater wing of this sphenoid this butterfly has a greater wing or this butterfly has greater wing there you want to see the form an oval not only form an oval i want to see form an oval and form an spinosum also why spinosum because middle mandibular artery you know so you want to look at the superior view of the middle canal fossa yes opening in the greater wing of sphenoid yes seeing some structure passing through right this is the diagram you are magnified now so still magnified yes still magnified you want to talk about the male structure passing from an oval what is m for m is the mandibular nerve branch of trigeminal and what is a for accessory mandibular artery what is l for lesser petrosal nerve and what is e for the emissary vein so these are the male structure but remember sometimes some population one of the dnb question lesser petrosal nerve may be missing from the foramen ovale then where is it found what is the dnb question dnb people asking some population lesser petrosal nerve is missing from the foramen ovale where is it found then where it is found yes i'll tell you it is here where canaliculus in nominatus remember lesser petrosal nerve is found in the canaliculus in nominatus in some percent of population that time it will be missing from foramen ovale it will be found in the canaliculus in nominatus and what is there in the foramen spinosum middle mandibular artery along with middle mandibular artery what is there in foramen spinosum the nervous spinosus what is nervous spinosus doing here where it came from it is a branch of the mandibular nerve so nervous spinosus is passing foramen spinosus and is a branch of the mandibular nerve doing what doing what it is supplying the skin on skin on what the floor of the middle cranial fossa do you know this is the floor of the middle cranial fossa here the greater wing of the sphenoid this is greater wing of the sphenoid this is the floor of the middle cranial fossa and it is supplied by nervous spinosus so nervous spinosus supplying dura mater at the floor of the middle cranial fossa yes is a branch of the mandibular nerve branch trigeminal yes that is the questions all this teaching is based upon questions which are already been asked and repeat potential or there may be new questions expected questions okay fine what was the answer to the question male structure yes you already told the answer why are you looking at this again because i need more information for middle mandibular artery what information you want for middle mandibular artery that is the answer you know it can bleed where deep to tereon what hemorrhage is that deep to what 
tedion what hemorrhage is that or oh, middle mandibular artery bleeding deep to tedion the hemorrhage is i think epidural hemorrhage yes not only it is called epidural hemorrhage it is also called extra dural hemorrhage so epidural extra dural hemorrhage is very much an emergency why it is very much an emergency because you have to evacuate the clot otherwise your patient will be evacuated patient will be evacuated from where from the ward to the autopsy room why because the patient is dead now oh that emergency yes that's emergency so telling that middle mandibular artery can bleed and deep to tedion yes and kill the patient yes it is an emergency because the patient is having epidural hemorrhage extradural hemorrhage if you don't evacuate the clot with the consultation of radiologist of course then may happen that your patient is evacuated from the ward into the autopsy room don't let that happen you are a good physician you know okay but i have to consult with radiologist of course you have to consult with radiologist you have to put bur holes bur holes in the skull yes to evacuate the clot actually these patients have lucid interval what is that lucid interval lucid interval psychiatry no not psychiatry this lucid interval is uh, a short period of consciousness this is short period of consciousness between the two periods of loss of consciousness loss of consciousness when there is a injury there is loss of consciousness but for a short time duration patient became conscious and there was some problem progressing but the patient will not show any sign of increasing severity and suddenly again there is second loss of consciousness so first loss of consciousness second loss of consciousness between them there is some period of consciousness where the patient appear normal yes that is called lucid interval and it can you know deviate your self from the diagnosis so be careful about lucid interval okay i will be careful when i go to nimhans i will do mch neurosurgery in nimhans oh, that's good why don't you do mch neurosurgery at aims no it is my preference i'll do at them hands okay then do it them hands doesn't matter my mbbs is from bangalore medical college that them hands is a very good institute but my md is from aims delhi it is also a good institute you can go anywhere don't worry anyway let us discuss the details now this is uh, tedion yes what is tedion tedion is h shape suture if you say tedion is h shape suture can you tell me which four bones are contributing can you tell me which fontanel was there fonten yes fontanel yes which fontanel was there sphenoidal yes sphenoidal antero lateral so antero lateral fontanel yes the sphenoidal fontanel yes when did it close Two to three months after birth. Two to three months after birth. You remember? Then what was this fontanel at the asterion? Fontanel at the asterion. Don't you know? Mastoid fontanel. And when the mastoid fontanel was closing, mastoid fontanel. It was closing one year. One year. And uh, when was the posterior fontanel closing? Lambda. Posterior fontanel. Posterior fontanel. Same time as the. Tedion, fontanel. So they are same time. What was the same time? That was actually two to three months. What fontanel was that? Posterior fontanel. Now it is replaced by this lambda. And what about the bregma? Bregma, anterior fontanel. So if you say anterior fontanel, then I think it was the last two close. Yes, one and a half years or maybe two years. So one and a half years, two years. Yes, that is anterior fontanel. Anyway, that is about the fontanel. What about the four bones making the tedion? Four bones making tedion, I'll tell you. There is this uh, frontal bone at the front and then parietal posterior and parietal posterior find then ear of the, the bone of the ear temporal bone inferior temporal bone bone of ear inferior yes what is this anterior bone then which also form the 
lateral wall of orbit lateral wall of orbit posteriorly yes Greater wing of sphenoid, yes. Greater wing of sphenoid, greater wing of sphenoid. So, greater wing of sphenoid is forming lateral wall of the orbit. Then, who is forming lateral wall of orbit anteriorly? That was the zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. So, zygomatic bone is anterior, yes. And greater wing of sphenoid is posterior, yes. Two bones forming the lateral wall of the orbit, yes. And the greater wing of sphenoid also contributing to terion. What is D to terion? T to terion is the anterior division of the middle mandible artery and that anterior division of middle mandible artery can bleed to give you extra dural hemorrhage epidural hemorrhage if there is a fracture at the terion there is a bike rider without uh, helmet hayabusa without helmet and fell down and fracture and bleed now lucid interval be careful don't go with his hayabusa there okay anyway where is middle mandible artery coming from middle mandible artery is coming from the first part of maxillary artery if it is coming from first part of maxillary artery then where is it passing through through the foramen what foramen foramen spinosum and after passing the foramen spinosum at the floor of the middle canal fossa through the greater wing of the sphenoid will enter the cranial cavity and when it is in the cranial cavity it can bleed deep to terion which division anterior or posterior division it is anterior division remember that is a question terion is a landmark where one other point is there what is the other point you remember there was some cerebrum having lateral sulcus lateral sulcus of cerebrum if you say lateral sulcus of cere cerebrum it is also called as sylvian sulcus so lateral sulcus of the cerebrum is also called sylvian sulcus yes what about that it begins here you mean to say deep to the skull there is cerebrum yes and in the cerebrum there is some lateral sulcus separating temporal lobe below and parietal lobe above yes parietal bone parietal lobe temporal bone temporal lobe so temporal lobe separated from parietal lobe by lateral sulcus and lateral sulcus begins at the terion yes actually lateral sulcus of cerebrum is also called sylvian sulcus this is sylvian point that is sylvian point yes sylvian point is deep to terion and that is the beginning of the lateral sulcus of the brain so a lot of information here in fact you are telling that uh, maxillary artery supply the bone maxilla here of course upper teeth also so maxillary artery will supply the bone maxilla upper teeth also yes and has first part giving you middle mandible artery which is passing for a man spinosum in the greater wing of sphenoid floor of the middle canal fossa yes and giving two division yes all that are questions what about the hemorrhage that hemorrhage you are talking about hemorrhage this is the hemorrhage what what hemorrhage actually it is the anterior division of middle mandible artery this is the latest dnb question latest means this year yes this year only okay let us talk about that hemorrhage in detail then you are asked about a ct scan picture ct scan picture what is a ct scan picture first of all you should know that it is the middle mandible artery bleeding and it is extra dual hemorrhage or epidural hemorrhage okay fine what kind of uh, picture in the ct scan ct scan you can see it is a biconvex shadow then hence we used to get such cases we had posting for 15 days and there we will see every day there will be some 15 to 20 cases of head injuries and some of them will be biconvex shadow we were trained for that to detect the cases so it is biconvex shadow yes in ct scan yes and that is a sign of some emergency of course it is emergency you have to consult the radiologist and evacuate the clot then you are telling there is an extradural hemorrhage yes but there can be other hemorrhages also how will you differentiate understand that uh, dura mater has double layer we have discussed that earlier if you remember that dura mater has double layer they are fused with each other but they split also to enclose dural venous sinuses now you have to understand that this is towards the skull so that will be meningeal layer and this is towards the 
sorry that is towards the brain so that will be meningeal layer let us take this as the skull because i am following the diagram this is the skull side so that will be endosteal layer of the dura mater so dura mater has two layers basically if you are talking about the dura mater actually two layers are fused with each other and uh, they split to enclose some dural venous sinuses dural venous sinuses have venous blood it is intra dural structure then you have brain inside and if brain is inside that is the meningeal layer of dura mater and the skull is outside so this is the endosteal layer of the dura mater now the point is if you have a space deep to this you will say subdural space and if a space outside that you will say epidural space or extra dural space so you are telling that if i am going towards the brain it is subdural under dura mater yes and if i am going away from the brain or towards the skull then it will be epidural yes that is the point and then you see the diagram this diagram yes what is this diagram about this is foramen magnum here and that is a skull having meningeal and periosteal layer of the dura mater but sir you said endosteal doesn't matter periosteal endosteal is doesn't matter okay then then you see here that the double layer of dura mater are here so you mean to say this will be the brain side yes and that will be the skull side yes so this is what is called as epidural or extradural yes that is the point here epidural or extradural it will separate the dura mater from the bone so as it is separating the dura mater from the bone then there will be emergency yes you have to put a burr hole and remove the blood so can you tell us about the subdural then of course let us see subdural also first you have to understand this information again which information the one which we just discussed look at this what is this the two layers of dura mater splitting to enclose dural venous sinus this time it is the superior sagittal sinus you are looking from the front view a coronal section a coronal section from the front view and you are looking at the superior sagittal sinus so this is the two layers of dura mater splitting to enclose dural venous sinus can we draw the diagram yes we will draw the diagram but remember under the dura mater you have subdural space under that you have arachnoid mater under the arachnoid mater subarachnoid space under that the pia mater covering the brain what is there in the subarachnoid space csf and what is there in the csf blood if there is a rupture of berry aneurysm so this is what you want to discuss yes okay discuss then you see this is double layer of dura mater and it is now spitting why to enclose a sinus what sinus that is a dural venous sinus name superior sagittal sinus you are looking for the front view and superior sagittal sinus so that is superior sagittal sinus a dural venous sinus and it is intradural yes it is intradural then uh, what is about that means outside yes that could be epi or extra dural hemorrhage if it is epidural or extra dural hemorrhage then what about the subdural subdural will be here now if you say this is subdural can you tell me why i have subdural hemorrhage because some veins are bleeding which veins are bleeding first you tell that this is the brain here what brain this is the cerebral hemisphere cerebral hemisphere which cerebral hemisphere right and left cerebral hemisphere okay then then cerebral hemispheres are sending some veins here where the veins are going what do you think where the veins are going into the dural venous sinus yes what are the veins called they are superior cerebral veins so these are superior cerebral veins and they are draining into the superior cerebral sinus yes they bleed and when they bleed then there will be subdural hemorrhage they are also called as bridging veins bridging veins are you telling that the cerebrum is having superior cerebral veins draining into the dural venous sinus and these veins are the bridging veins and they bleed to give you subdural hematoma yes subdural hematoma okay fine you are telling this is dura mater double layer of dura mater yes then what will be under that under that uh, i will have this uh, arachnoid mater if this is the dura mater double layer 
Then this is a arachnoid mater. Yes. And what is under the arachnoid? Under the arachnoid, the subarachnoid space filled with CSF. So this is the under the arachnoid, the subarachnoid space, subarachnoid space with CSF. Yes. What is in the CSF? Arteries. Which arteries? Circle of villus. Circle of villus. Yes. You are telling circle of villus branches are in the subarachnoid space. What if there is a barrier and there is a bleed? Peri aneurysm bleed, then you will have subarachnoid hemorrhage and the CSF will be stained with blood. Okay, then what is deep to the subarachnoid space? That is the brain. No, what is brain covered by? Brain is covered by pyometer. Pyometer. Remember, what is the cerebrum covered by? Pyometer. What is over the pyometer? Subarachnoid space filled with CSF. What is over that? Arachnoid mater. What is over that? Dura mater. The most outer membrane? Dura mater. Deeper to that? Subdural space. Deeper to that? Arachnoid mater. Deeper to that? Subarachnoid space. Deeper to that? The pyometer. Deeper to that? The cerebrum. You have discussed the three hemorrhages here. Yes. Which one is that? emergency? Emergency is extradural hemorrhage and the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Extradural hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage. And what about the subdural hemorrhage? It may present as emergency, but usually it is patient kept under observation. No emergency. So this is usually no emergency? No. But sometimes it can present as emergency? Yes. Acute cases large hematomas acute cases large hematomas and what if it is chronic small hematomas chronic cases small hematomas not emergency but acute large hematomas can be emergencies okay fine these are the three things you have discussed yes if it is outside the dura mater it is called extradural hemorrhage and if it is subdural hematoma it must be under the dura mater Subdural means under the dura mater. Dura mater is here. This is under the dura mater. And why this bleed? Because this bridging vein is bleeding, you see. Bridging vein is... Where is bridging vein going? This is cerebrum draining into dural venous sinus. So this is cerebrum superior cerebral vein draining to dural venous sinus. Yes, superior cerebral sinus. Yes. And the vein is bleeding now under the dura mater, which is subdural hemorrhage. Yes. That is what we have discussed. And what is the third one? Third one you have seen here. What? What is this? This is the subarachnoid hemorrhage. If you say this is subarachnoid hemorrhage, then why there is a hemorrhage? You know this artery, circle of villus branches. Where are they? Circle of villus branches are in the subarachnoid space. So if they bleed like there is a rupture of the barrianism, then there will be a bleed and CSF will be stained by the blood. This is the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. So three type of hemorrhage. Yes, we have discussed the three. If it is between the skull bone and dura mater, outside the dura mater, it is extra dural. Deep to dura mater, sub dural. And if it is subarachnoid space, then it is subarachnoid hemorrhage. These three hemorrhages we have discussed. Now let us move further. As you are talking about Cavernous sinus thrombosis, there are some questions coming upon that. First, you should know what are the contents of cavernous sinus. Then you should know what will be the problem if it is a thrombosis there. So, so tell me what? What is exception? Exception, yes. I think um, I must know the answer by now. Yeah, of course, you should know the answer by now. Cavernous sinus thrombosis is raised intracranial tension, definitely presenting with papillary edema. Raised intracranial tension, papillary edema is there. And because there is a thrombosis, there will be venous congestion behind the eyeball and that venous congestion behind the eyeball, that venous congestion behind the eyeball in the socket will push the eyeball out of the socket. Protosis will be there. Since there is thrombosis, there is venous congestion behind the eyeball, pushing the eyeball out of the socket, there will be protosis, of course. This is wrong and this is the answer. Why this is wrong and this is the answer? Because sensory deficit will be related to only two branches, 5-1 and 5-2, not the 5-3. Why not the 5-3? Because it is not a content of cavernous sinus. 
So you are telling that the sensory deficit will restrict only to the forehead and the chin. Yes, not the mandible skin. No. Why? Because mandibular nerve is not a content of cavernous sinus. It is not involved. So only ophthalmic and maxillary nerve involved. Yes. So this is the answer. Yes. What about the choice number D then? That you know already. What? What is this? Still eyeball. Still eyeball. I remember something to do with the number 346. Yes, the number 346. That is a correct statement. In fact, you have known that. External of cellular leading to still eyeball due to injury of which is the first nerve to get involved. Sixth. But then after that, three, four are also involved. Now the eyeball cannot move at all. This is no problem in this question. That is not an issue. Issue is choice number C. So that should be the answer. Can you tell me why this is the answer? Okay. I'll tell you. But this is the answer. See, your patient came to you with cavernous sinus thrombosis. You are examining the patient. You found patient telling, I have pain on the forehead and tip of the nose. Patient is telling, I have pain on the forehead and tip of the nose. The skin is having pain because ophthalmic nerve is a content of the cavernous sinus. It was involved in cavernous sinus thrombosis. Now remember, some patient will have pain on the skin of the cheek, which is maxillary nerve territory, lower eyelid and upper lip territory. But some patient will not have pain. Do you remember I told you something? I told you, maxillary nerve in some patient may be outside the cavernous sinus. Though, you should say, maxillary nerve is a content of cavernous sinus as given by Harrison 19th edition and 20th edition also. But have you read Gray's Anatomy 41st edition? The latest? Always read from latest books. Harrison, latest edition. Gray's Anatomy, latest. Very Love, latest. Sebastian, latest. I have all those books, all the latest editions. Whichever book come, if it came 10 days back, I'll have the book. Because, because controversies. I read all the books. I read, I told you, I have made one book reading 400 books. Self-assessment review of anatomy is not written just like that. I teach that way that controver I take care of controversies at a deeper level. And that is what is happening. Remember, Gray's Anatomy 41st edition is telling maxillary nerve is outside cavernous sinus, which is not to be depended upon. So, Surely. So what is the information? Information is simple. Maxillary nerve is definitely a content of cavernous sinus. But in some people, it may be outside cavernous sinus. And then, then the patient will not have pain on the skin of the maxilla. But can the patient have pain or not? Yeah, some will have and some will not have. But will there be any pain on the skin on the mandible? In cavernous sinus, somebody says, no. Why? Because mandibular nerve is never a content of cavernous sinus. No pain on the skin on the mandible because mandibular nerve is never a content of the cavernous sinus. Pain may be there on the cheek skin because maxillary nerve may or may not be the content of cavernous sinus. But ophthalmic is always a content of cavernous sinus. So ophthalmic is always a content. Yes. And maxillary nerve may or may not be a content of the cavernous sinus. Yes. But keep it content according to Harrison medicine. And uh, mandibular nerve is never a content. So one question came, one of the AIMS question. Cavernous sinus thrombosis. Yes. Is the jaw jerk working? What is the question? Cavernous sinus thrombosis is the jaw jerk working. Jaw jerk masseter reflex? Yes. I think jaw jerk masseter reflex is uh, mandibular nerve, sensory motor nerve. Yes. Since the mandibular nerve is a sensory motor nerve for the jaw jerk or masseter reflex, is it working or not? In cavernous sinus thrombosis? Of course it is working. It is intact. Because the nerve is intact. So remember, jaw jerk is intact. It is working in a case of cavernous sinus thrombosis because it is sensory motor nerve, mandibular nerve carrying out the reflex. Now, which nerve supply the skin on the angle of the mandible because it is not trigeminal? Actually, skin on the angle of mandible is supplied by 
A nerve which is supplying the greater part of auricle and who is supplying the greater part of auricle? That is the greater auricular nerve. Now, if you say greater auricular nerve supply greater part of auricle, is it supplying laterally or medially? No, not medially, laterally. So, it is supplying laterally here. Yes. Okay. So, greater auricular nerve supplying laterally, not medially here. No. What about the lobule? Lobule? Yes. Both side. When you are a girl or maybe boy also, you puncture the ear lobule, which nerve will tell you it is painful? Maybe lateral or medial? That is greater auricular nerve. But greater auricular nerve supply this area, not that area. You mean to say upper ear, medial surface is some other nerve. Yes, that is lesser occipital nerve. Remember, greater auricular nerve will supply greater part of auricle laterally and medially also. But only ear lobule because if you say medial surface of the auricle, upper auricle, then it is lesser occipital nerve. We will discuss that later as well, drawing a diagram. But here, remember, if you are a girl or maybe boy, some boys also, one, one ear, they puncture. Which nerve will tell you it is painful? Maybe lateral, maybe medial, it is same nerve, greater auricular nerve. Now, if you say it is greater auricular nerve, maybe lateral, medial, ear lobule, pain carried by the same nerve. What is the dermatome? Dermatome of what? Angle. Skin of the angular mandible. Skin of the angular mandible, I can see C2. Okay, C2. Fine. Do you know we don't have a C1 dermatome in our body? Why? Why we don't have C1 dermatome in the body? Because C1 spinal cord do not supply the skin. You are telling C1 spinal cord will not supply the skin, so we don't have C1 dermatome? No. Okay, so dermatome begins with C2. Yes. Now, when you say dermatome begins with C2, fine. What is the answer to a question asking skin at the angle of the mandible? Harrison says it is C23, but it is not actually. Why? What is it? It is only C2. So, you are telling that skin of the angle of mandible in Harrison is written as C23? Yes. So, there is a mistake in Harrison medicine? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I cannot comment. See, I cannot comment upon the mistakes in the book. But I can tell you that if there is an option to choose, then which answer to choose? I don't say that Harrison is telling something wrong. But if you have to take an Take a choice, you know, life is all about choices. So, which choice will you take? What is the question you are talking about? Let me show you the question, but be careful. Some books will say that skin of the angle of mandible is C23. But it is not C23, it is purely C2. The diagram in Harrison is 45 years old. They have not changed the diagram. They should change the diagram. 45 years old diagram they are using. Diagrams have changed after that. So, it's really doubtful to follow the diagram of Harrison medicine. Anyway, I told you my job is not to tell which one is wrong, which is right. My job is just to deal with such questions. Give you the best possible answer. Tell me what is your answer. Now, dermatome at the angle of jaw. Yes, C2. But C2 is not in the option. What will you do now? Will you take your answer as uh, C12? No. Why? Because there is no C1 dermatome in the body. There is no C1 dermatome in the body. This cannot be the answer. Then what is the answer? Must be C23. Which book are you talking about? Harrison Medicine. But just now you told that Harrison Medicine has a mistake. Yeah, maybe. But I have to follow the book. So, it is not a question of mistake or not a mistake. Just know the answer. You should teach your answer. So, you are telling that um, dermatome at the angle of mandible is not supply mandibular nerve branch of trigeminal. No. So, it is not supplied by C12. No, because C1 dermatome is not in our body. So, this is the answer. Yes, that is the answer. According to Harrison Medicine. Yes, but not the Gray's Anatomy. No. According to Gray's Anatomy, you cannot reach the answer. So, that's why, you know, you have to read Grey's Anatomy, then you have to read uh, Harrison Medicine also to deal with such questions. Anyway, this is the answer.